All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to SEO's webinar on preparing for the OAT. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Um, my name is Avery Cunningham. I am a student services and admissions officer here at SCO. I am one of the admissions team members who answers your admissions questions and participates in the admissions process. Before we get started, I ask that we all use proper Zoom etiquette by keeping microphones muted unless speaking, limiting background noise, and respecting all of this webinar's attendees and facilitators. We will have time for questions toward the end of the webinar, but in the meantime, if you do have any questions or concerns, um, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen to communicate with us. Today, we'll be discussing the OAT, possibly the most important exam for any student considering a career in optometry. Um, so we're going to go over some basic topics, such as what is the OAT, where we'll explain the OAT in some depth, um, talking about when you should take the OAT and how you should schedule it, talking about registering for the OAT, the resources that are available to you as you prepare for the OAT, and then finally, um, the day of the test when you're actually taking the exam. Um, also, a quick disclaimer, I am myself not an optometrist. I have never attended optometry school, nor have I ever taken the OAT. This information about the exam is based on research and professional experience. Um, and a final reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be free and available to view starting next week on our website. So let's get started. So what is the OAT? The OAT is the Optometry Admissions Test. It is a standardized exam sponsored by the Association of Colleges, um, excuse me, of Schools and Colleges of Optometry. It is more or less required of all students seeking admission into optometry school. Um, the OAT shows aptitude for basic sciences, capability for optometry school coursework, and skills as a future optometrist. Um, it provides a very standardized measurement for optometry school applicants. However, there have been some temporary changes in terms of how schools view and accept the OAT, mainly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, more and more schools of optometry are accepting an MCAT and or GR rescores in lieu of the OAT, or are considering applications without standardized tests altogether. Um, I will say that SEO, um, we do have a very strong preference for the OAT. As said earlier, we feel that it is the best measurement of a student's capability for optometry school coursework and skill as a future optometrist. However, if you have an MCAT and or GRE score and not an OAT score, please reach out to us and share your situation. Um, there can be some opportunity for you to submit that MCAT and or GRE score um, if you have not taken the OAT yet. Although I will say those um, situations are very, very specific. We ask that your MCAT or GRE score be in the top percentile. Um, and we also asks that you have a strong GPA in correlation with that MCAT or GRE score. Um, also, if um, you have taken all three, an MCAT, GRE, and OAT, we are going to place preference on the OAT. Um, even if your OAT score is not as strong as an MCAT or a GRE score, since that is our preferred exam, that is a score that we are going to use when assessing your application. I always recommend to students to go ahead and take the OAT, no matter what. Um, since it is our preference, I, you can never really know whether or not the admissions committee is still going to ask that you take the OAT, even if you've taken the MCAT or GRE. Um, that is not highly common, but again, I have seen situations where a student may submit an MCAT score and the admissions committee just doesn't feel that that is a strong enough representation of their capabilities and they'll go back to them and ask to take the OAT. So just to save yourself some time, some money, and some unnecessary inconvenience, go ahead and plan to take the OAT no matter what your um, status is within the other standardized tests, at least when you're approaching your SEO application. The OAT is accepted by all optometry schools in the US and Canada. Um, the main skill sets that you will be tested on with the OAT include reasoning, critical thinking, um, reading comprehension, data analysis, and problem solving skills. Um, more than anything, the ability to think analytically and approach a broad range of scientific 
topics and concepts will be just as important as the ability to regurgitate information and perform well on the test. So no, ma no matter how well you may um, answer questions or memorize calculations, um, if you're not able to approach these scientific concepts with a great kind of critical thinking approach and a broad mindset, um, then you might have some difficulty on the OAT. So really be sure to wrap your mind around those skill sets in particular, even before you go into the more detail oriented preparation for this exam. So breaking down the OAT. And before we get started breaking down the specific subjects within this exam, let me say that there is no penalty for guessing. It will always be in your best interest to answer every question before time runs out on the exam. Um, so if you feel that you're getting in a bit of a rut, if you're feeling overwhelmed, please go ahead and try your best to answer every question and give your, yourself the best chance possible at still um, completing the exam and earning a strong score. Um, so as you'll see on the chart before you, there are about 230 questions total over the whole course of the exam, and the whole exam is going to cover approximately 300 minutes. There are two optional sections on the OAT, um, an optional tutorial to help kind of familiarize yourself with the technology at the start of the exam, and then a post-test survey at the end of the exam, for which are about 15 minutes each. Um, but then breaking down the actual subjects, the survey of natural sciences is going to be the longest portion of the exam since it covers three individual um, subjects and topics such as biology, general chemistry, and organic chemistry. So the survey of natural sciences is going to clock in at around 90 minutes. Um, the next longest section is going to be reading comprehension, which is going to be about a solid hour long, covering about 50 questions total. Um, then right in the middle, you're going to have an optional break of 30 minutes. Um, we definitely recommend that even though the break is optional, go ahead and take it um, just to give yourself a, a fresh start so you can come back to the physics section with an open mind. Um, the physics section is going to be about 50 minutes with 40 questions each, and the quantitative reasoning, even though it has the same amount of questions as the physics section, it's going to be um, about 15 minutes less time, around 45 minutes. So starting off talking about the survey of natural sciences, biology. Biology is a broad subject, so please study broadly. Um, you can expect to see the whole range of the subtopics and the subsections within biology on the OAT test. You can expect to see cellular and molecular biology, diversity of life, anatomy and physiology, developmental biology, genetics, and evolution, just to name a few um, topics that you may see on the exam. Um, I have interviewed so many students or counseled so many students who go into the OAT's biology section thinking that since it's an exam for a human science medical degree that you just have to study the human sciences portion of biology and that is certainly not the case. Um, I've talked to students who go into the exam and see several questions on plant biology um, or animal biology on the exam. So do study broadly when you're going into this section. Don't bog yourself down in one subsection of the OAT's biology section thinking that that's going to be all that's covered. Um, you're going to be expected to um, kind of call up all manner of knowledge to, to answer questions within that section. General chemistry is the next section within the survey of natural sciences. This is going to involve more calculations than biology and therefore more time and scratch work. Um, and you'll hear me kind of repeat this several times throughout this presentation, but when you're preparing for the general chemistry section, go ahead and build into your um, practice and your prep time a um, Cal, um, excuse me, a stopwatch type of feature. So you can really test and make sure that you have enough time built in for all of the scratch work that'll be required of you. Um, time management is hugely important on this exam. And the last thing you want to do is, is get bogged down trying to figure out um, certain calculations. So be sure to build that into your prep time so it won't be a surprise when you show up on the day of the exam. And then the final section of the survey of natural sciences is organic chemistry. Now, these questions are going to involve drawing out reactions, complex, complex figures, and naming slash identifying molecules. Now, the reading comprehension section. Even though the reading comprehension section has not overall been viewed as the hardest section of the OAT, it can be the section that causes students the most trouble, mainly due 
to time management. Um, on the reading comprehension section, you will be expected to read three passages with 16 to 17 questions per passage. The key skills tested here are going to be finding the main idea, processing information, and reading slash understanding dense passages. As I said, time management is usually what really um, trip students up in this section. So when you are prepping for the exam, do spend a significant amount of time learning how to read quickly, but also read thoroughly. Um, you do not want to get in a situation where you're having to read the same passage multiple times to get to the main idea. Um, you, as I said earlier, there of course is no um, problem with guessing and making sure that you fulfill every question to the fullest but with the reading comprehension section especially you want to be sure that you're using your time to the best of your ability physics section now the physics section is considered to be the most difficult section of the oat across the board whether you're talking to students or um, professors or members of the admissions committee. It is a broad subject, so please study broadly. It's going to be equal parts theory and command of math slash problem solving skills. Um, a recommendation for students who may have struggled a little bit with their physics coursework, um, before you even dive into the OAT specific prep for this section, talk to your professors, your um, teacher's assistants, your student teachers about the basic physics concepts that might have tripped you up in the coursework so you can be sure that you have the most solid foundation possible when you're going into your prep. Um, as I said, this is considered the most difficult section of the OAT. That doesn't mean spend all of your time preparing for the physics section, but you want to give it the respect that it deserves. And then finally, the quantitative reasoning section will be the last section of the OAT. The key skills tested here are going to include mathematics proficiency and problem solving. So you can expect to see everything from algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and word problems within the quantitative reasoning section of the OAT. Now, what does it mean to be competitive? Um, so on the screen before you, you're seeing a breakdown of um, the average OAT, average GPA for the past 10 years or so um, for each of the incoming admissions classes. And I'm gonna talk about these numbers a little bit, um, but I wanted to just give you a brief overview of what you're seeing on the screen. Now the OAT test is graded on a 200 to 400 point scale. There's one grade for each section and then a total science grade and then your overall academic average grade. SEO tries to stay very holistic when making admissions decisions. Um, students are assessed based on their whole application and presentation, not just their test scores. However, a strong test score is never ever going to be to your detriment. Um, we certainly encourage you to approach this exam with as much preparation um, and as high hopes as possible. We want you to go into this test um, planning and intending to score the best score that you can. Um, but that, of course, does not mean to be very hard on yourself when it comes to this exam. The range of what is considered competitive can vary based on school to school. But for us here at SEO, 320 plus is going to be considered fairly competitive. Um, now, if you're someone who wants to be eligible for our high ranking scholarships, like our 25,000, 20,000, $15,000 a year scholarships, that average OAT is going to need to be a bit higher, close to maybe 340, 350 in order for it to be competitive. But for general admissions purposes, 320 plus is still considered to be fairly competitive. Um, 300 to 310 is considered the low end of the average. Um, even a 300, you are still within a perfectly reasonable range to be accepted, um, even though, again, that's going to be the lower end of our average. Now, below a 300 is going to be a recommended retake, not an automatic retake. Of, as I have said, you are more than welcome to still submit your application and see how your below 300 score is viewed in comparison with the rest of your application. Um, but it's going to be our solid recommendation most of the time that if you're looking at a 290, 280, and a certainly 270, that you're going to need to retake the exam. Um, if you're ever not sure whether or not your score is still considered competitive when viewed in correlation with the rest of your application, please feel free to reach out to us before you make that investment, before you make that choice, and we can give you some more um, personalized counseling. Um, since 
SEO is holistic when looking at scores. Since we don't have a grid that says this and above are in and this and below are out, please use the averages of previous years as a guide for where your score needs to fall in upcoming application cycles. As you can see, the OAT scores it are increasingly becoming more competitive. Um, over the last 10 years, the average score has gone from a 320 to closer to a 3. Um, 35, even as high as a 340. Now for the past four years, as you can see, it stayed pretty evenly around 335, 340. Um, but also, as you can see, there has been some steady increase from year to year, not only with the OAT, but also with the GPA. Um, so while 320 plus is a solid range. Um, if you're really trying to stand out in the application queue, getting upwards of even a 340 or plus can be, you know, in your best interest. Now, when should you take the OAT? Um, this is a big question, and there are a couple of smaller questions that you have to answer first before you can really decide when the best time is for you. First off, when do you want to apply for optometry school? This can be different depending on your academic situation. Most traditional students choose to take the OAT the summer after their junior year. Um, so this is going to be the summer um, before the application itself opens. Um, but that, again, is more suited for traditional students who are coming directly out of um, undergrad into an optometry school program. If you're someone who has been out of undergrad for a while, let's say you're in a master's program or you're professional with you know a full-time job and a career, um, then it may look a little bit different for you. Um, we even have or, or excuse me, we should, I should say, we're even open to third year students. So for example, if you are just entering your junior year of optometry school, you can be eligible to apply if you have um, adhered to all of our requirements for admission. And that's going to change when you personally should take the OAT. Um, more or less, it's going to be about when you feel that you're best prepared. Also, when you feel that you're going to have the most time to study. We recommend giving yourself three months to prepare for the OAT. Um, so, for example, if you want to apply in, let's say, September, um, and you want to have your OAT done a month in advance, you're going to have to give yourself a good three months to prepare for that exam. Now, three months is just our recommendation. Um, that's not the same for everyone. It's not what everybody requires, but we feel in order to give yourself the best fighting chance of going into the exam as prepared as you can be, um, giving yourself three months out to study is going to be in your best interest. Now the qu next question is going to be, have you finished relevant prerequisite courses? We recommend taking at least introductory levels of the courses tested on the exam prior to actually taking it. Um, it can be you know, not exactly in, in your best interest when you are studying for the physics section of the OAT without ever having taken a physics course at an undergraduate um, or collegiate level. Um, it's just going to make things a little bit more difficult for you. So that's going to, again, um, skew when you should take the OAT. If you haven't taken basic biology courses, physics courses, organic chemistry courses at an undergraduate level yet, you may be advised to wait until you have time in your schedule to take those courses so you can have a pretty strong foundation going into the exam. Um, next question, when will you have time to study? Be honest with yourself and your schedule. Studying for the OAT is an intensive process that requires a lot of time and energy. Attempting to juggle too much um, can cause more harm than good. And I apologize real quickly. Um, you may hear some yard work happening outside. I apologize for the, the inconvenience. I'm going to try to still speak up and speak out <laughs> so we don't get, get bogged down by, by the leaf blowers. Um, but again, be honest with yourself on your schedule. I have spoken with so many students who think that they can take or prepare for the OAT while they're also taking exams or dealing with family issues or trials or applying to other programs. And that is not always going to be the case. Or I've also seen a lot of students who will prepare for the OAT while balancing a very full, even overly full course load. And it can cause them a lot more pain and um, confusion and stress than they really need. So that's also a reason why most students will prepare for the OAT and take the OAT the summer of their junior year. If, if it's during the summer and they're not taking any summer courses, they're going to have a lot more time to study. Um, but again, be honest with yourself. Don't go into a situation where you're going to kind of set yourself up for failure. 
Um, we're going to have time for questions towards the end. So for those people who are dropping questions in the q and I'm going to come back to those at the end of our, um, of our presentation. So I'll be right with you guys. Now, the application for SEO is going to open either on June 30th or July 1st. It varies from year to year, but it will always close on March 1st. Um, SEO is a rolling admissions institution. Your personal application deadline should be June 30th, not March 1st. Um, of course, if you can't get your application submitted right at the beginning on June 30th, that's perfectly fine. I recommend to students to have your application submitted no later than the holidays, so Thanksgiving, Christmas, around that time. Um, but certainly don't try to wait until March 1st to have your OAT taken and submitted. Um, also something you want to be aware of is if you have to take the OAT more than once. Um, this is certainly not the type of exam where you're expected to take it once and have your ideal score. We have spoken to several students who are going to take it um, two or three times. However, I will say if you do end up intending to take the exam more than three times, um, you're going to have to request a special kind of dispensation from the um, OAT facilitators who are going to kind of assess where you are to see what can be done to make sure that um, your next attempts on the exam will be a little bit more successful. Um, but you want to give yourself enough time in kind of your whole application journey to retake the exam if necessary, if your first score is not, you know, to your liking or you don't feel it's kind of the best that you can do. Now, applying to take the OAT is relatively simple. Um, I have the link up here on the screen for you if you want to take a screenshot of that, but also it can be very relatively simple to just Google the OAT application and it should take you directly to this link. Um, you have to request a PIN first to apply. Now the PIN will be used to help identify you throughout the OAT process, so please be sure to keep track of that number when it is assigned to you. Um, you will also be required to read the 2023 OAT guide before applying, which thoroughly, and I do mean thoroughly, lists the topics in each section and goes over administrative procedures. When you're looking at the OAT guide, it's going to seem like a really um, strenuous article, but, but let me tell you, it is, it is thoroughly engrossing and it gives you the best information that you can for exactly what you can expect to see on the OAT exam. Um, the accommodations request. If you're someone who is um, dealing with a documented disability or medical slash mental condition as described in the Americans with Disabilities Act, there is an accommodation request that you can complete um, that can be applied towards your test taking experience. Now you'll need to download, complete, and submit this accommodation request form before scheduling your test. Um, the evaluation report from an appropriate healthcare professional and documentation of previous accommodations accommodations will be required. So if you um, have a specific need and if you are wanting to move forward with an accommodation request, there are going to be a couple of hoops to jump through, but that's not to say that accommodations will not or cannot be provided for you. The test will be taken at a Prometric test center. Um, this is going to be an entirely virtual experience, but you are going to have to go to a secondary location. I know, especially during COVID, this was a big concern, how you couldn't take the OAT at home in a sterilized environment, um, but it remains to this day that you will have to travel to a secondary location to take your exam via computer. Um, after your application and fee are processed, you will receive instructions on how to contact Prometric and arrange a date time, location, et cetera, for the test. Um, we recommend trying to schedule your test um, 60 to 90 days in advance. Um, again, one, to give yourself more time in case something changes, and also to give the Prometric Test Center time in case they have any sudden changes they need to make due to um, COVID outbreaks, which is um, are not so much of an issue these days, but have certainly been an issue in the past, and something that we still, of course, want to make students aware of. So, for example, if you want to take your test in June, submit your registration in March. Um, the test is held throughout the year, so you can schedule to take the OAT at any time. Now, the cost to register for the exam is expensive, and this cost has actually just gone up within the last few days. Um, two weeks ago, it was $505 to register, but as of today, it is $515 to register. Um, so this is a very, very, very expensive test. Um, and another reason why you should go into it as prepared as possible. This is not the type of exam that you want to just keep taking and taking and taking until you get the score that you think you want. Um, 
that is, again is not to say that students don't end up taking it more than once, but taking it three times, four times, five times is not only strenuous in terms of your uh, mental health, um, but, um, but it's also very, very academically strenuous. So you want to make sure that you have the funds that you need before you go into registering for this exam. The fee to reschedule is going to range from $25 to $150, depending on how far in advance you reschedule your exam. And then your score report fee after time of application is going to be $50. So this is the cost for the OAT administration to send out your scores to all of the schools to which you'll be applying. Now, there are fee waivers available on a first come first serve basis beginning in January um, of any given year. So those fee waivers have already um, um, started being applied and awarded for this year, 2023. Candidates who qualify for a fee waiver must demonstrate financial hardship, prove that this is their first time taking the OAT, be a US citizen or resident alien, receive financial aid at their educational institution and must submit fee waiver financial information form and education institution financial aid award letters. Um, so these are a lot of hoops to jump through to get a fee waiver, but um, that is not to say that one cannot be provided for you if you do follow the basic steps. Um, and I fully encourage you to double check the website. All of this information is available there on the OAT's website to give you more specific information on how to apply for a fee waiver. If you can't find that on the website, feel free to reach out to us here at SEO and we'll walk you through the process. Now, COVID-19's effect on the OAT, even though it has been a few years, um, we are still feeling the effect of the um, pandemic on how the test is administered um, and how it can still be a bit of a, an issue for some students when they're trying to get everything um, properly organized, um, such as limited testing sites. This is still um, ongoing. Um, some cities or some communities may not have as many testing sites available as prior to COVID-19, and this is going to affect your scheduling for how you um, are going to register to take the exam. Um, say, for example, if there, before 2020, if there were five testing sites available, and so you had, you know, hundreds of days available to take the exam, now there may only be two testing sites available, so you have to work around that um, availability and capacity. So be prepared to schedule your test date far enough in advance uh, for scenarios where your test date has been moved back or altered because a testing site has been overbooked, which has been known to happen. There may also be test center policy changes. Um, while all test centers are currently opening, open and functioning to capacity, that may change. Um, and social distancing or face masks may be enforced at um, different testing sites um, throughout the country. If you are trying to figure out exactly what OAT, or excuse me, what COVID um, stipulations may be enforced at a specific testing site, use the email on the screen, oatexam at ada.org. Email them and ask them, what exactly do I need to do or provide um, in, order to be an OAT, in order to be in COVID-19 compliance? Take this exam and they'll tell you exactly what to do. Um, do not make the mistake that so many students have made of just showing up to the testing center and having no idea if there are any COVID-19 stipulations. Um, for some testing centers, you'll need to provide proof of vaccination. For some, you'll need to come with a face mask. Um, and for some testing centers, if you do not have these things in place, you cannot take the exam. Even if you've registered for it, even if you've paid for it, even if you're showing up the day of the, the exam ready to take the test. So please do your due diligence, reach out to the OAT administrators and ask exactly what is expected of you before showing up to the location. Now we're going to talk about preparing for the OAT. Um, mainly, this is going to come up so often when you're talking to students, to doctors, professors, to admissions representatives. Don't regurgitate. Remember and retain. Do not cram. This is not the time to cram for this exam. It is large. It is expensive. It's cover covering a very, very broad range of topics. It can be virtually impossible to cram for an exam like the OAT. So don't set yourself up for failure by trying. Um, again, give yourself at least three months to study prior to taking the exam. 
Also be aware that an A in the course does not guarantee a perfect score on the OAT subject tests. I have spoken to several students who said that because I've done so well in biology um, in my academic coursework, I just didn't even bother studying for the biology section because obviously I know everything I need to know. And that is most certainly not the case. Those same students may show up on testing day and everything that's tested on the biology section may be something they have never seen before. And that can really slow them down. And for many students, that may result in them having to retake the exam. Um, so give the exam the respect it deserves. Do not treat it like something that you can just study for over a weekend and show up bright and early on testing day and ACE. Um, give yourself the time and the consideration to observe every single um, subject test to its fullest to make sure you have the best foundation possible going into the exam. Go ahead and start creating and maintaining a habit of review. It is never too early to prepare for the OAT. If you are currently a freshman or a sophomore and you are in biology courses, organic chemistry courses, physics courses, go ahead and start um, going over these materials, not only to help do well in the course itself, but also to give kind of a, a fresh start to preparing for the OAT. Um, figure out how you study. Um, the OAT is a type of exam, and I've spoken to several students, that's going to really require you to figure out what your best study habits are. If you're someone who needs visual aids or audio aids or some kind of mix of all of those, um, go ahead and decide that now. Um, I've, again, spoken to so many students who come into the admissions process, and all they do is get the Kaplan book, open it, work through it and say, okay, I've studied for the exam. Lo and behold, they show up for the test and they score far below what they expected, mainly because a Kaplan study book may not be their best form of um, preparedness. It may not be how their brain retains. It may not be um, how they're most comfortable studying. So really take the time now in your coursework to um, experiment and find out what works best for you. Do you prefer to study alone or in groups? Do you uh, prefer something visual or practical? How much time do you reasonably need to study? When I say reasonably, I mean, I mean practically. Not how much time you need to cram, um, but how how much time you need to fully absorb the information and retain it. Um, some things that um, have been recommended are creating study groups in your pre-optometry club. So if you are currently an undergrad and you attend an institution that has a pre-optometry club or even a pre-health club, go ahead and um, meet up with other um, optometry school um, students or students who are applying for optometry school and create a study group where you all can work together to prepare for the OAT. Um, there are so many students who talk about how isolating the OAT can be since you may be the only student in your in your class or the only student in your um, uh, field of study who's planning to go to optometry school. It can be really lonely having to discuss this exam on your own and prepare for it on your own. So do yourself a service and connect with other individuals so you can have a support group as you go into this pretty strenuous exam. And as always, review notes from relevant courses. Um, in many situations, you've already done the basic work that's required to do well on this exam. Um, so don't just say, okay, I've taken that physics course and I'm never going to think about it again. Um, keep reviewing, um, keep retaining. So when it does come time for the exam, you can have the best foundation possible. Um, and then you'll see on the screen just a list of some basic resources that either have been recommended by us directly as admissions professionals or have been recommended by students. Um, the Kaplan Review, um, while it's not best for everyone, it can still be a pretty solid foundation. Um, OAT Destroyer has been heavily recommended by students. Chad's Videos is an online seminar series where you can take really short, um, pointed, um, video lectures um, covering everything from physics to organic chemistry to biomedical sciences um, for a pretty reduced cost. Um, practice tests via the OAT webpage. The OAT does provide a lot of practice exams, so you can use those for free and don't have to purchase a, like a big book of practice exams through Kaplan or something like that. Um, OAT Bootcamp has also been heavily recommended. And of course, other students, professors, and pre-health advisors will always be able to offer some practical and personalized feedback. Um, all of this goes back into how you best study. Um, if you're someone who does not do their best with just a big giant book of prep, if you need something visual, something that changes, something a little bit flashier, look at all of these different study guides and resources and put together the best prep course for yourself. Um, also talk 
to other students about what works best for them. Um, because what works best for some people may not work best for you, but it'll at least give you a good foundation when you're trying to figure out how to put together a solid study plan. Okay, so the OAT, the day of. Um, a lot of these tips you're probably going, you probably heard before when preparing for the ACT or the SAT, but it may have been a while since then and it never hurts to repeat them. Um, report at least 30 minutes early. Um, and if possible, visit the testing site the day before to ensure you're able to locate it and determine how long it will take to get there. Also, please have any transportation needs confirmed and prepared. Um, even to this day, I've spoken to students who wake up the morning of their um, OAT exam, they put the location into their Google Maps, and lo and behold, it takes them an hour to get there, and they've only allotted 15 minutes. <laughs> this is a true story. These things have happened. So do yourself the service the day before or even the week before. Um, take a little drive and figure out how you're going to get to the OAT site and how long it takes you to get there. Also, sometimes the OAT is held on college campuses, and you're going to have to jump through some extra hoops um, in order to get your um, um, clearance to be on that college campus. All things that add on more time to your travel time. Um, so again, do your due diligence and prepare in as much depth as you can for how you're going to get there and when you're going to get there. Bring two forms of identification. This can be driver's license, passport, social security card, even a credit or debit card, or even a library card, but you're going to need two forms of identification at least. Um, ensure your name on their OAT application matches the names on your IDs exactly. Uh, if there's any um, um, confusion between the two, you will not be allowed to take the exam. If you fill out the OAT application as um, John Smith, but it says on your identification, like your driver's license or your passport, that you are Jonathan Smith, you will not be allowed to take the OAT because of the um, difference between the two names. Minor as it is, um, the Prometric testing centers are very, very um, safety oriented, and they try to make sure there's not even the, the hint that someone may be cheating on the exam or taking the exam under a false ID identification. Um, so go ahead and be sure that your name matches your ID and your OAT application or registration, I should say, exactly. This is not so much the case today, but um, of course after COVID-19, but it still may be possible that your biometric data will be collected. That can be a photograph, a fingerprint, or even your temperature. So be prepared for that and don't be surprised when it happens. You will be provided a personal locker to store your items in, um, such as your phone, food or beverage, beverages, writing utensils, wallets, keys, purses and jackets, et cetera. You will not be allowed to bring anything with you into the testing center itself where the computer is located. Um, so you might wanna go ahead and prepare just to bring your basic necessities, keys, wallets, things of that nature. So you don't have to worry about storing all of your personal items. Um, you will be provided, or excuse me, you may be provided with note boards, markers, and a basic calculator. Don't be um, expecting those. Um, that, again, is a may. It does depend on the testing center itself, but more often than not, those three things will be provided to you. After the test. Um, now, this is something that shocks many students. Your unofficial scores will be available automatically. Um, so as soon as you finish the exam, you're, you're going to um, press complete, and within seconds, your score will appear on the screen. This can be great for some students. It eliminates the stress, it eliminates the weight, but it also can be hugely um, um, shocking for students. You, you don't have to wonder about how you performed on the exam. You're going to know relatively immediately. Um, now, these are going to be your unofficial scores. Your official scores are going to be sent to the schools of your choice within three to four weeks. Um, at SEO, we recommend submitting your unofficial scores in advance. Even though we won't be able to invite you for an interview based on your unofficial scores, it'll help give us an idea of where you are competitively within the, um, within the application queue. Um, you should have the option of printing your unofficial scores, but if not, be prepared to, to maybe take a screenshot um, so you can have that recorded and you can send that along to us so we'll have a basic idea of you know, what you're working with in terms of your, um, in terms of your OAT scores. More often than not, there's not going to be a big change between your unofficial and unofficial scores. Um, the, 
the only situations I've heard of are when there's some kind of um, technical issue that have skewed scores. And so um, there has to be a kind of investigation where they go back and try to adjust scores accurately to um, reflect the actual tests without the technical difficulty. But those situations I haven't seen myself in my time working in this field over the past three or so years. There is a 90 day waiting period between attempts and you'll need authorization, as I mentioned earlier, for a fourth or fifth attempt. So please build that 90 days into your schedule. Um, if you are planning to submit your application in August, that'll still give you a good amount of time to be in the first wave of applications if you need to retake your exam, um, since they, you do have such a long wait time in between. Um, I've said before, but I'll say again with numbers, 75 to 85% 80 of students take the OAT only once, and that is a relatively small percentage comparatively speaking. So don't expect that you're going to have your best score the first time. It's great if you do, but if not, you're still going to have time and opportunities to retake and try again for a better score. For those of you who have taken the OAT previously, um, if your score is older than two years, it will not be accepted and you will have to take it again, even if your previous score is, is you know, a 400. Um, because it's an older score, you're going to have to retake the exam. All right, so that brings us to questions. Um, I know that we've gone over a lot of information with this presentation. Um, I will say that a lot of this is based off of research as well as personal experience. Um, if you just do a little digging, um, then you'll find answers to many of these same questions. Um, but as always, we at um, admissions here at FCO are here to help. So if there's ever any confusion, you can always reach out to us personally. Um, so if you have any questions, please post them in the chat or the Q&A feature, which is very similar to the chat at the bottom of the screen. Um, so let me open this up. I know we have a couple from earlier. Okay, Austin asks, um, I will graduate from undergrad in May 2024, so hoping to start after that. Um, so I will apply this July and then was thinking of taking the OAT in July or beginning of August. Will that be fine? Um, and then uh, um, Austin also asks, is it more beneficial to apply than take the test or take the test and then apply? All right, um, so there is certainly no harm in going ahead and applying prior to taking the exam, but you should know that you will not be invited for an interview until we have your exam scores. Um, so that again is going to go back into your personal schedule. If you want to save yourself some time, um, go ahead and apply. Um, so we'll have your application on file. We can kind of see where you stand in terms of your um, GPA, your transcript, your personal experience. But until we have your OAT score, we cannot invite you for an interview. Um, so if you are submitting your, um, your application in July, as you said, um, and if we're not receiving that OAT score until September, October, that might not be in your best interest. It's going to really, really push back your um, timeline for when you'll actually be invited for an interview. But certainly there's no harm in going ahead and submitting your application and just waiting on your OAT score if you want to kind of stay ahead of the game, um, if that answers your question. Alrighty, any other questions? I'm not seeing me in the chat or the Q&A. Um, and again, I will say that since I am not an optometrist myself, have not attended optometry school, I cannot speak from the perspective of someone actually taking the exam, but more from the perspective of someone who looks at, at exam scores to judge with um, admissions applications. Um, so you have any questions about how your OAT may match up with any other aspects of your application, I can definitely answer those questions. All right, another question from Austin. So um, is it fine if I apply in July and then take the exam at the end of July? So that'll be the first week of applications. Um, yes, Austin, that'll be perfectly fine. Um, though I will again say that you will not be invited for an interview until your OAT is submitted. So if you take it at the end of July, we may not receive your OAT score until until mid to late August. Um, so that just be aware of that as you're, you're making your plans. All right, any other questions?
All right. Well, um, if you do have any other questions at any point in your process for preparing for optometry school, you'll see my email up on the screen there. Please feel free to reach out to me at any point. I'd be more than happy to help you. Um, and that is going to bring us to the end of our webinar. Um, I know we have covered a whole lot of information today, but I do hope that this webinar has been of assistance as you start on your optometric journey. Um, your next webinar is going to be on how to become a competitive applicant. It will be hosted by my Mike Robertson, our Director of Admissions and Enrollment, um, and the registration link will be live on our website soon. Um, but in the meantime, again, please reach out to not only um, me, but anyone in the admissions department for questions. And if you have not done so already, I invite you to request more information by signing up for our inquiry form. By completing this form, you'll receive a personal advisor and a personal brochure with information relevant to your goals and experiences. We hope to see all of you in the next webinar in May, but in the meantime, have a great weekend and take care.